Okay. Good afternoon. It is a great pleasure to have today as a speaker of the colloquium Alessandro De Martino, a leading expert in the physics of novel quantum materials. De Martino obtained his PhD from the International School of Advanced Studies in Trieste. Later, he was a research fellow in Lyon and Freiburg, then professor in Düsseldorf and Cologne, finally moving to City University of London. De Martino research activity mainly focuses on the electronic and transport properties of carbon nanotubes, of graphene, topological insulators, and vile semi-metals. And the last two systems of quantum matter are precisely the topic of the present colloquium. These are examples of the deep interconnection appeared in recent times between condensed matter and high energy physics, originating from the underlying basic structure of quantum physics combined with topology. Many ideas developed theoretically since the 70s in the high energy framework, mostly for unrealistic models, now find an incarnation in real materials. And conversely, these materials suggest a new idea in the physics of fundamental interactions. Let me just quote some of these phenomena. The existence of fractional charge in systems whose elementary field have only integer one, and the appearance of excitation obeying the so-called braid statistics, being neither fermion nor boson, possibly also useful for quantum computation. The emergence of anomalies, the phenomenon of the disappearance of a classical symmetry in the quantum version of a field theory, and the mechanism of their cancellation by boundary effects, whose first example was the fractional law effect, inspiring also sophisticated inflow mechanism in high energy physics. In particular, when a topological structure enriched the Brillouin zone, the space labeling the momenta of periodic quantum systems such as crystals, this generates the appearance of a novel form of matter, the topological materials. So let's now our speaker using his own words to be our guide in the journey through the fascinating aspects of nature that such new materials reveal. Please. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Pier Alberto. And uh, thanks a lot for this invitation. It's, um, it's really a pleasure and it's an honor for me to, uh, to give this colloquium. Uh, I've just known that been told that uh, the preceding colloquia were given by Nobel Prizes, so I feel completely humbled by this and very much honored. So, um, uh, as you can see, I uh, um, slightly changed the title of my talk because I thought that even a short journey would be uh, a bit too ambitious for the time constraint that I have here and also to be honest, for my expertise. So I thought that it would be better to talk of um, a short walk through uh, topological quantum matter. And, uh, and in fact, when I started to think about how to, what to present, uh, I start to feel a bit like, to have this feeling a bit like I have when I enter the National Gallery or when I go to Pompeii, you know? It's like I mean, you are completely overwhelmed by the multiplicity of masterwork that, that you find there, or things, simply things to see. So I decided that I have to find a strategy and my, for this talk, and my strategy is to take you on a short walk. A bit, you know, like you go to the National Gallery, you, you decide to visit a short section. Short section that, however, uh, presents some of the milestones of the evolution of a certain art style, if you are in the National Gallery. So here, I'll try to take you on this walk and show you some of the milestones uh, in the development of uh, the study of the physics uh, of topological quantum matter. So let me start with a bit, uh, with that, this title, top, the topology revolution. What I mean by that? Well, topological aspects in physics have been, uh, um, have been known since uh, at least the time of the Dirac monopole. But what we, have, um, what we are seeing uh, now in, this, in the last two decades is really that uh, topology has a lot to uh, teach us about states of matter, new states of matter that have been discovered theoretically and then demonstrated in, in the labs. Uh, I'm, I'm a solid state physicist, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take the perspective of a solid state physics, a physicist. 
And, um, and I'll try to illustrate this, uh, how these topological ideas uh, can be used in the, in the context of solid state physics. Now, in general, in fact, uh, condensed matter physics, one of the big themes of condensed matter physics has always been the, the discovery, uh, the characterization, and the classification of different phases of matter. And one of the dominating paradigms, a uh, very successful one in the second half of the last century, was Landau's theory of phase transitions. You know, so a phase of matter can be characterized by the symmetry and by, and by the pattern of its breaking. So the concept of spontaneous symmetry breaking. Now this has been really the, one of the main, most important paradigms in, in condensed matter physics. What is happening, uh, what has happened in the last, I would say 40 years, but this, has, this process uh, has accelerated in the last 20 years, is that there is a shift of paradigm. And uh, because um, many systems have been discovered where there is no symmetry which is broken. So, so the, the, the framework of symmetry, uh, of uh, theory of symmetries is, is not enough to characterize phases of matter. And another paradigm uh, is emerging, in fact, has emerged, which is the paradigm of topological order. So in few words, a topological phase of matter is a phase of matter where there are some fundamental properties which are insensitive to smooth changes of the material parameters. And when I talk about fundamental properties, to give you some ideas, think about, for example, the old conductance. I will talk about that uh, later on. Or the existence, the possible existence of states on the surface of materials which are insulating in the bulk, states which are superconducting, exist only in the surface, and are conducting states, okay? So the number of these states, and so on. So I'll, I'll, uh, I mean, this will be the main topic of this talk, in fact. And, and this, uh, this, uh, these properties, which uh, are called sometimes topological invariants, inv invariants uh, can only change if something singular, some discontinuity, happens in the, in, the, in the system. So like if the system goes through a quantum phase transition, in the context that uh, I will discuss about, this, this continuous change will be the closing of a gap in an insulator. So, well, this is just a cartoon. Um, since I mentioned topology, what, what, well, let just a few words about topology. So the idea is that um, topology, is, as we all know, is a branch of mathematics that studies properties which are invariant under smooth changes of, smooth changes, like deformation, twisting, stretchings, but uh, the form, uh, changes that do not involve tearing, okay? And these properties are known as topological invariants, invariant, and in this sense, uh, you can establish certain equivalence between object, like, for example, from the point of view of topology, a soccer ball uh, is the same, is equivalent to a mug without handles. A donut is topologically the same as a mug with a handle, and this is a medical ball with two handles is topologically equivalent to a, to a mug with two handles. Now, if we want to change the number of handles here, or if you want, of, uh, we can formulate this also in terms of uh, holes. So there is no hole here. There is a hole, a single hole in the donut. There are two holes in the, in the mug. Then if we want to change this, which is an integer number, we have to go through a, a singularity. And this is a nice cartoon that I found on the Nobel Prize uh, website. Uh, um, um, in the section about the, the Nobel Prize for uh, Taules, uh, Kosterlitz, and Haldane uh, in 2016. So this illustrates how you can move from a sphere to a torus, but if you want to do that, you have to go through a discontinuity. You have to tear up the sphere to make a torus. So this pole represents a discontinuous change. Um, so that's my proposal for a talk, uh, for a walk. So we, uh, we will enter into the band theory, um, topological band theory. This is the first step, the, the first stop, sorry. Then I will uh, briefly talk about uh, quantum Hall effect because this was historically is the first example of a topological phase uh, of matter in, in solid state physics, actually. Then uh, we will look at the churn insulator where we will learn that topological properties um, in solid state physics, uh, do not depend uh, from the existence of, from the application of an external field, but can be intrinsic in the material. And then we will come to the most, uh, the, the modern part of this, of this uh, topic, which is first the discovery of the quantum spin-hole insulator, 
um, and which is a, a state of matter where time reversal invariance is uh, preserved, and it's analogous uh, topological insulator. We will see that the topological invariant that is used to, to describe the states of matter is different. Uh, the churn insulator is an integer. In, uh, in the cases of two-dimensional and three-dimensional topological insulator is an index which can only take two values. So it's a completely different type of topological invariant. And finally, uh, I'll, I'll uh, uh, move to a state of matter which are not insulating but are conducting and where also topological properties emerge and have been studied and demonstrated experimentally uh, recently. So in case the time is not enough, we will have also an uh, emergency exit, which is represented by this line. So let's start. Um, so as I said, I, ta I take the, the, the perspective of a solid state physics, uh, physicist here. And uh, solid state physics is built on band theory. We all know about that. So if a uh, uh, crystal, uh, the Hamiltonian is invariant under uh, discrete translations. And then um, uh, the states can be parameterized by the crystal momentum. Uh, this is the famous block theorem. Probably all of us uh, learn about that in quantum mechanics. So a uh, um, generic uh, uh, electronic state can be represented by a plane wave and uh, a factor here, which is the so-called block wave, which has the periodicity of the lattice. And K is a crystal momentum, and is a momentum that lives in the so-called Brillouin zone. Um, the block states, uh, which are represented in this way, are eigenstate of the block Hamiltonian, which is the Hamiltonian of, of your system, with eigenvalues uh, described by EM of K. So function of K, smooth functions of K, M denotes labels the bands, and collectively all these energy levels form the band structure. Now, to give you an idea of, uh, of a band structure, um, I present you this, uh, this is probably the most famous band structure of the last 20 years, is the band structure of graphene. Graphene is uh, a collection of carbon atoms organized onto an onecom lattice with two sublattices. So um, this is, this is represents the Brillouin zone of graphene, which has an hexagonal shape. So here we are in reciprocal space, and Kx and Ky are the crystal momenta. There are two special points here at the corner of the Brillouin zone, K and K prime, and they are special because the two bands that exist in, uh, in graphene, uh, the conduction and the valence band, touch precisely at these two points. Only two of these corners are independent, and close to these points you have the famous uh, Dirac cones, okay? which is one of the, the reasons why graphene has been so popular uh, since its discovery in 2005. Now, the block Hamiltonian, just to give you an example, has this simple structure. This is the famous two-dimensional Dirac equation, uh, where the momentum here is measured with respect to the k point, and the energy bands are uh, the famous Dirac cones here. Uh, this energy band is, uh, describes the bands very close to the, the, the corner here, and these are the block states. This is just to, to give you a sense of what these block states and energy band look like. But, um, notice, uh, so as a remark, but this will uh, be relevant later on, uh, if we break in graphene in version symmetry, so for example, if, you, if we make the two sublattices uh, different, uh, so if you put some difference in energy between the two sublattices, a new term appears in the Dirac equation here, is a term proportional to sigma z that is like a mass for the Dirac fermions, which are otherwise are gapeless or massless, and this makes graphene an insulator. Okay, because you open a gap, and then, uh, and then the system is insulating. This will be relevant later on. Um, so now uh, let me come to real, um, the point. So um, one of the first things that we know about solid-state uh, systems is that they are distinguished into insulators and conductors. Okay? So typically the, situation is, the typical situation is illustrated here. So you have band structure of, uh, say, a one-dimensional crystal, and then if the Fermi level is between two bands, in the gap between the two bands, you call this state an insulator. That's because it is inert, and if you apply a, an electric field which is not too strong, or if you do some perturbation, nothing happens, basically. So it's a very sort of inert state of matter. Whereas if you move the Fermi level into the conduction band, so the Fermi level is in the band, then, uh, well, you have a, a metal. Okay, which appears much more interesting because then if you apply external f uh, fields, then okay, you have a lot of dynamics. 
So insulators, in some sense, are dull. But in fact, the discovery of the tw last 20 years is that they are not at all dull. And the reason they appear dull is because we only look at the uh, band structure. We only look if there is a gap and if the Fermi energy is in the gap. But we don't look at the structure of the block states. Okay? So there is a beautiful structure in the block state, hidden in the block states, which is at the origin of these topological uh, properties. And this is what I want to sort of uh, explore here. Now, um, so the idea, in fact, the more general idea um, uh, is the following. So, um, and this is the, the idea of topological band theory, that is, uh, we can imagine that we classify all possible Hamiltonians, uh, by, by the way, uh, as a remark because before I go on, I'm talking here about single particle systems. So interactions are for the moment and correlations are completely neglected. So this is really the uh, first step and it will be so in the rest of this talk, okay? Um, so you can imagine that you can uh, organize these, these Hamiltonians in different, uh, different equivalence classes such that um, Hamiltonians that are in the same class can be joined, I mean, you can find a path from one Hamiltonian to the other uh, a pass in parameter space, which is smooth. So nothing happens special, no discontinuity happens when you move from one Hamiltonian to the other in parameter space. Now, no, no discontinuity here means that the gap that separates the bands, the conduction valence band in the system, never close along this path. Okay? That's the discontinuity I have in mind. Okay? Um, so, in fact, the transition, so this, these classes are characterized, can be characterized by a topological invariant. And there are different types of topological invariants that we will explore. Now, the transition from one class to the other requires the gap to close, and this is also a crucial property in this topic, because if the gap closes, so imagine that you have an interface between two topologically distinct phases of matter, then uh, so a material, so on one side you have a, a certain value of the topological invariant, on the other side another value. So if you, if you move across, okay, the gap must close the gap in the band structure because otherwise you cannot change the value of the topological invariant. If the gap closes at the interface, this implies that there are some surface states, so electronic states localized at the surface, which are gapeless, so they are conducting. Okay. And this is one of the sort of dominating topic, uh, uh, topic of this, of this talk, theme, I should say, of this topic. This is called bulk boundary correspondence, and I'll show you a few examples of that. So the question is, are all insulators dull and inert and uninteresting? Well, the answer is not, or topologically equivalent, if you want. The answer is not, and, um, can, and this is illustrated by the quantum Hall effect. Now, quantum Hall effect was discovered in 19... Here, I have in mind the integer quantum Hall effect. So it was discovered in 1980. It was a big surprise. So that the whole conductivity is quantized uh, in a two-dimensional electron grass in a strong magnetic field. So in a quantizing magnetic field, so where you form Landau levels, is uh, very accurately quantized in uh, integer multiples of a fundamental constant, which is E squared over H. Now, from the point of view of the energetics, actually, this band structure is not very different from the band structure of an insulator. The Landau level are, have gap, gaps between them. And this conductance uh, quantization is observed when the Fermi level is within the gap. Okay, so, so, so that's sort of, it's, it's a bit strange, right? I mean, if you think about an insulator, this is an insulator, should be an insulator. Okay. But, in, in fact, it has a you know, quantized all effect. Okay. So, so I put them together. So on the one side, I have an insulating state. This is band structure with Fermi level in between. Nothing happens, and interesting. And then I have the quantum Hall effect in which I have a band structure. By the way, Landau levels can be thought of the simplest example of magnetic band structures, so, but the, the, with Fermi energy in the, band, in the gap. And still, this is a completely different state. Well, what is the difference? The difference is a matter of topology. And in some very precise sense, uh, the insulating state is like a sphere or a don uh, uh, an orange, and the quantum Hall state is like a donut. Okay, and let me explain why. Well, actually, this was sort of uh, this was uh, um, demonstrated. It was understood. It was understood in this famous paper, uh, well, uh, by Taules, Komoto, 
Ah, here there is a mistake. There should be an N, not a K. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, um, uh, so in this paper, basically, uh, Taules and collaborators, which is, uh, notice that it's from 82, uh, proved that the all conductivity in a two-dimensional electron gas can be ex um, expressed um, as, um, in this way. So it's a sum of integers where these integers um, are the fluxes of a sort of gauge field defined in the brillant zone. So more, more precisely, you can imagine to, um, so we have our uh, block states, you can start what is called the Berry connection, which essentially describes how the phases of these block states changes if you move around in the Brillouin zone, roughly speaking. This is like a bit like a gauge field. It has a, Berry, a curvature associated to it, which is called Berry curvature, and uh, which is the, the curl of this gauge field. Um, the integral over the Brillouin zone of this quantity is a topological invariant, okay? uh, and it is given by an integer. This is, in fact, called the Chern number. The more mathematically minded people call this, uh, well, of, uh, call it a Chern class. In fact, all the, there, is, there is a mathematical side which I, I really have no expertise to, to talk about, which is the mathematics of fiber bundles which provides the formal framework for all these ideas, but I'll, I'll approach this problem as a physicist. Notice here there is Berry and Berry curvature, Berry connection. This is the Berry of the Berry phase, but uh, interesting uh, to, to see that Berry published his, uh, his paper where he popularized the idea of Berry phase in 84, two years after that. And they already understood uh, that this is a topological invariant. It is relevant in the transport property in the quantum mole effect. Now, so, uh, the difference between an uh, ordinary insulator and quantum mole effect is because uh, in, uh, in the quantum mole state of matter, this takes a finite value. Okay. And in fact, it's equal to the number of occupied Landau levels. Okay. Now, it seems, uh, however, there is something that, uh, so this is the, the very first step, uh, topological state of matter, okay. quantum mole effect. What is that? Um, there is a magnetic field here. So is this topology really due to the structure of the, of the solid, of the crystal, or here is a sort of two-dimensional electron gas? So it's some intrinsic structure, or is due to the magnetic field? And here, if you approach the problem from this side, you may think, okay, but this is an effect of the magnetic field. Okay, so the next step, and this was a, an important milestone. Oh, sorry, I just uh, forgot that to mention that. Uh, there is an analogy b between this uh, topological invariant here and the gauss bonnet theorem that uh, expresses a topological property here in, of two-dimensional compact surfaces. Um, uh, a topolo so it's a theorem that relates a topological property, the number of holes, to some local geometrical property, which is the curvature. So uh, this is just an analogy, but th this uh, formula here is very similar to this one. Okay. So this is a local geometrical quantity, and this is a topological global quantity. Um, this is called the genus. This is a, a famous theorem, uh, obviously, is uh, formulated by, Ga by Gauss, uh, uh, and, and then uh, the proof, I think, it was given by Bonnet, so the formal proof. So, okay, so this is now the, the next milestone, and we are in 88. So, uh, all effect uh, 1980, here is 82, 88. And this is um, uh, the, the, the famous, now, Haldane model. So, the question that Haldane uh, posed himself is the following. Can we get a quantum all state without Landau levels, without magnetic field? So, in some sense, the idea is, is it possible to have a quantum all state without the help of the magnetic field, something which is intrinsic. And what he discovered is that, yes, it is possible. How do you do it? Well, the idea is that uh, he started with a graphene honeycomb lattice. So he started from an honeycomb lattice, carbon atoms. And then we imagine that there is uh, next nearest uh, uh, neighbor hoppings, which are complex. Now, uh, this uh, complex hopping amplitude break time reversal invariance. And this is really the crucial ingredient for the quantum mole effect. In fact, the, the, the magnetic field breaks time reversal invariance. And this, this was the crucial effect that made possible a Chern number different from zero. If you have time reversal invariance, the Chern number is zero. 
So he basically cooked up this model and he discovered uh, that the, the, the band structure uh, can acquire a mass. So there is a parameter regime in which um, the system is as insulator, but it's a special type of insulator okay, because um, is, it, has a, it has a finite share number. Okay? Um, without magnetic field, I mean, that's, that's the, the crucial point. Uh, Close to the, the K points, again, we have uh, the, the famous Dirac cones. In this case, they are gapped. So there is a mass. And really, the, 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 the ingredient from the point of view of this Dirac Hamiltonian that still describes the physics close to the corner points of the brilliant zone is that the two masses at the two K points uh, are different. Okay. So there is this tau z here is a Pauli matrix, which takes the sign, uh, is a diagonal term, but is a Pauli matrix in ballet space. So it is plus one for, uh, for the mass at one valley and minus one for the mass at the other valley. Uh, so you break time reversal, this breaks time reversal invariance, but preserve inversion symmetry. So with this uh, sort of a trick, uh, he managed to get um, a churn insulator, because nowadays this state is called a churn insulator with a finite, with a quantum, in a quantum all states. Um, this is now, now a, a quantum all state without, uh, which exists without magnetic field. It's called nowadays a quantum anomalous all effect. The anomalous all effect was discovered by Edwin Hall one or two years after his discovery of the whole effect. And refers to the fact that in a ferromagnetic metal, you see that the, the whole effect is much larger. Okay. And it's, 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 uh, here it refers to the fact that there is no external magnetic field. This has been now observed recently, 2013, on the surface state of a topological insulator. I'll come back to that. Okay, so I mentioned at the very beginning uh, this uh, bulk boundary correspondence, which is the fact that if you uh, move from a region uh, with a certain value of topological invariant to a region where the topological invariant is different, <coughs> then you must have gapless states, the reason being that in order to change a the value of a topological invariant, which is an integer, you have to go through some sort of singularity and in, the cost, in this context, the singularity is the closing of the gap. If the gap closes at the interface, this means that there, is, there are conducting states at the interface. And this is well known, this is again, is well known in the quantum all effect. You have the so-called skipping orbits on, on the side uh, uh, of, the, of the material. If you have an all, uh, uh, an all um, stripe, a uh, strip, Okay, so these are well known. So this represents an interface from a, a topological state with chair number one, for example, and a, a topological state uh, 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 with chair number zero, trivial insulator. So this, these states can be understood in this, in this framework. Um, and this is the, the, the same picture. So you, what is this, um, what this, this edge state? It's a state which interpolates between the valence and the conduction bands. And it only exists at the boundary. Okay. Now, its interpretation in the context of what the whole effect is clear, uh, less clear is its interpretation in terms of the Haldane model. Still, this Haldane model at these uh, edge states. Now, if you take the geometry of a, of a, uh, of a ribbon, say, uh, then you have two edges, and you have uh, two modes that, uh, uh, that are localized at the edges. And notice one peculiarity. Uh, here, see, you, uh, here you see that the, the, um, there is a fixed slope here. It's a positive slope in this case. Now this is a chiral mode, and which is also illustrated here. So these modes at the edge only propagate unidirectionally. They only have one way of propagating. They are called chiral. Now this is a very important property because this means that they are insensitive to disorder. Typically, disorder localizes electron states in one dimension because disorder produces backscattering. So electron backscatter, you have, uh, which is a source of resistance. So this cannot backscatter because if they want to backscatter, they have to move across the, the, the sample. So basically, they are protected, okay? uh, which means that the transport is ballistic and there is no dissipation. These are conducting channels which do not dissipate energy. Okay? So from a technological point of view, they are very appealing. So this is a, actually this idea of a chiral mode uh, uh, at the interface between these uh, two topologically distinct uh, regions uh, originated already in the 70s uh, in the context of field theory, actually, in a work by Jackie Verrebi and then later in a work by Sue Schrieffer and Eager for the, um, where, where studying the conducting properties of uh, polyacetylene. And uh, it can be uh, modeled by a two-dimensional uh, Dirac equation with a mass which changes sign. 
So the change of sign of the mass represents this change of topological invariant. The reason is that depending on the sign of this mass, you might have either uh, um, a certain value of a topological invariant or the opposite one. And you see, I mean, this is a very, simp uh, it's a very simple model, but it's very neat because you can solve it and you find that there is a, a mode which is localized exactly at the interface uh, and this mode has, uh, uh, is chiral in the sense that the energy depends linearly on momentum, but the group velocity has always the same sign. Okay, so far, we have, uh, uh, we have seen that the quantum mole effect can be realized, the quantum mole state can be realized also without magnetic field. Okay, but, that, uh, but still, we have to break time reversal invariance. Okay, Aldane model uh, break time reversal invariance because of the ho complex of hopping amplitudes. Or, or in the context of uh, a graphene model, because this term breaks time reversal invariance. So then the next question is, is it possible to have topological states preserving time reversal invariance? Okay. Now, this is actually a very non-trivial question because in the presence of time reversal invariance, the churn number is zero. So certainly you cannot use the churn number to characterize a topological state of matter. So something else, uh, one should find something else. And um, Ken Emily in 2005, 2005, this is the year of the discovery of graphene, by the way, um, uh, they, they found this uh, new topological uh, uh, quantum number, or new, new topological invariant. Okay. Um, so they were thinking about system where there is time reversal invariance. Now in a system with spins um, uh, in the presence of time reversal invariance, you have Kramer's degeneracy, meaning um, each eigenvalue of the block uh, Hamiltonian is at least double degenerate, okay. um, because, uh, well, if, if you have time, time reversal invariance, uh, for band M, this relation must hold. Okay. Here, time reversal invariance is, as, as we know, is represented by an anti-unitary operator, which for spin one half particles square to minus one. That's, this minus one is the origin of Kramer's degeneracy. And, uh, and then, uh, and then Kane Emily understood that uh, it is possible to formulate another topological uh, invariant, um, which, uh, however, is different from the churn one and takes only two possible values, zero or one. That's why this topological insulator is called Z2, which is uh, the notation used to say the cyclic group of, um, of the integer, so zero and one, basically. So now, um, there are several uh, mathematical formulations of uh, this uh, topological invariant that involves looking at the Brillouin zone. So I, I, I thought to, obviously I, I won't go into this, there is not, uh, not enough time, but I would like to give you an idea, so very qualitative idea, why uh, um, the topological invariant can only take two values, basically. And uh, so the argument goes this way. So first of all, um, um, there is this boundary correspondence, okay? So we know that in the presence of a boundary, say, we have a system where we suspect that there is a, a topological state of matter and then, then the vacuum. So we expect to see uh, uh, edge states, okay? Uh, now notice that the system, the geometry that I have in mind is a two-dimensional geometry with, with a boundary along, say, the X direction. So if the boundary is along the X direction, uh, so in this way, so I have one good quantum number, which is the momentum in this direction. Okay? So I can think of a Brillouin zone, one-dimensional Brillouin zone, parameterized by the momentum along this uh, translation invariant direction. Uh, I also have time reversal invariance in this system, so I can show only half, I need to show only half of the Brillouin zone, the other half being just the mirror image. Okay? So this is uh, the Brillouin zone from zero to pi over a, and this is the momentum uh, that along the, the translation invariant direction. Suppose, and so we have a conduction band, a valence band, and a Fermi level somewhere in between. This is an insulator. Now we know that uh, we expect to have edge states. Uh, edge state, depending on the uh, uh, details of the Hamiltonian, edge state might not exist. But suppose that edge states exist. And that at this zero and pi over a, 
um, there are a certain number of Kramer's pairs. Now, zero and pi over a are two special points in the brilliant zone because they are time reversal invariance momenta. Okay? So they don't change under time reversal. Zero, obviously, if zero a is equal to minus zero, pi over a is also the time reversal invariant because its time reversed is minus pi over a, which is equivalent to pi over a because they, uh, uh, their difference is just a reciprocal uh, vector, uh, a vector of the reciprocal space. So um, then suppose that uh, we have a pair here and, uh, and two pairs here. And suppose that now we want to connect these states. So one possibility is that we connect this in this way. Okay? So these lines would represent the dispersion of edge states. So they are, they are sort of connected pairwise. Notice here that this, the dispersion intersects the Fermi energy an even number of times. But there is another option. The other option is that there is a, single, uh, there is a node number of intersections. So if we connect the person this way. Notice that this crossing here and here are protected by time reversal. So they have to come together at the boundary of this uh, brilliant zone. Okay? Now, this, is, this describes a completely different situation. Why? Imagine that now we can sort of tune the parameter of the Hamiltonian. Now, in this situation, we can imagine that we can continuously move these two edge states, in the, move them into the valence band or in the conduction band, so that there is no edge state crossing the Fermi level. If you try to imagine the same thing here, it is not possible. If you imagine modifying this dispersion, and bring this dispersion in the valence band or in the, in the conduction band, there still will be uh, at least one intersection with the Fermi energy. Okay? So this is the qualitative difference. So either you have an odd number of, of, um, of uh, intersection, sorry, here, and this is the non-trivial uh, case, or you have an even number, and this is the trivial case. The reason being that this can be connected uh, smoothly to a situation in which there are no edge states. This cannot. Okay. And then the back boundary correspondence can be expressed in this way. The number of Kramer pairs is at the, surf, at the interface between the uh, two, uh, two dimensional topological insulators is the difference in the value of this index new modulus two. Okay. Now, is this realized, this idea? Well, um, so the original uh, proposal of uh, Kane and Emily for this two-dimensional topological insulator here uh, was a model uh, built with graphene. So the, their idea was, let's start with Aldane model. Aldane model breaks time reversal symmetry, so that's not good enough. But electrons have spin. So they uh, found, so what we can imagine is that we have two copies of Aldane model with an opposite sign of the effective, of a sort of effective magnetic field, a different sign in the mass depending on the spin. Okay. So this was, um, this was the, the, the idea in which really it, it appears like time reversal asymmetry is not the crucial ingredient, it's rather the conservation of the spin. But in fact, then in a subsequent paper, they showed that the basic um, um, ingredient is time reversal asymmetry and the, and the Kramers degeneracy. So um, this model, however, uh, didn't work in the sense that um, the one ingredient in the model was the spin-orbit coupling in graphene, which is very small. Spin-orbit coupling in graphene is basically the atomic spin-orbit coupling. Carbon has few, uh, has as small as a weak spin-orbit coupling because it's up in the, I mean, it's, it's has a small atomic number. And so um, it doesn't do the trick. Spin orbit coupling graphene is not big enough to, to do the trick. Um, so, uh, actually, the, the first real topological insulator was then predicted and uh, very soon discovered experimentally in uh, so called um, mercury telluride, cadmium telluride quantum wells. So, basically, this is a, is a sort, I mean, these are semiconductors, uh, and uh, the, 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 um, all the physics uh, happens in this layer here in the quantum well. Now, depending on the width of the quantum well, uh, the uh, Zhang and Bernevi, Hugh, and Zhang predicted a quantum phase transition 
between an artery insulator and a, and a topological insulator. So if the width exceeds a certain width, um, then they predicted uh, a topological insulator, Z2 topological insulator, which was observed experimentally in this paper. So th what are the characteristics? Uh, the whole conductance is zero because there is a time reversal invariance. However, they have a spin conduct, spin hole conductance, which is finite and quantized. Sorry, I think here uh, there is a, no, this is the value of the spin, or, uh, is the, the value of the spin hole uh, conductivity, sorry. And, um, and the, the experimental smoking gun, if you want, was the measurement of the two terminal conductance. Now, in the two terminal conductance, uh, what they measured is uh, the transport properties due to the edge states. Remember, these are insulators. And the conducting uh, states only exist at the, at the edges, a bit like in the quantum mole effect, by the way. Uh, but um, what they measured is that uh, uh, a conductance of 2 is square over h. Okay? Now, conductance of 2 square over h is due to the fact that there are this propagating mode at the edge, which are not chiral. You see they are illustrated here, but they're so-called helical uh, edge states. Uh, they're called helical edge states because they must occur in Kramers pairs. So on each edge, there are two modes, actually, of one-dimensional conducting modes. In, uh, and they differ because of the spin, so they, are op they have opposite project projections of the spin, and for, of, uh, they have opposite sense of propagation. Okay? In fact, uh, there is a phenomenon called uh, spin momentum locking here, uh, a conducting mode that, which is propagating towards, say, the, the right here is a spin up, say, and the, the one propagating to the, to the left a spin down. And then on the other edge, you have the opposite situation. So the mode propagating to the, to the right, as, uh, as we said, this is spin down, and the mode propagation is the same, actually. So, so the, 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 spin pro uh, the spin projection is the same as the uh, momentum direction. These are called helical edge states. And again, this is a very peculiar state of matter. Um, this is like having a half of a one-dimensional uh, quantum wire on the edge. In, in a normal quantum wire, you would have right and left movers with spin up and spin down, so in total four modes. But here you have only two, because the other one, uh, so the, the right mover with spin down is not allowed. Now, this is also an important consequence, which is if you have disorder on the edge, you still don't dissipate because there cannot be any backscattering. Disorder cannot backscatter a right mover into a left mover because they have opposite spin. These states have opposite spin. So normal disorder, like electrostatic potential, cannot change the spin state. So again, these are insensitive to, uh, to disorder. So Anderson localization, for example, does not take, localization, sorry, localization here cannot take place. Okay. The transport is uh, ballistic and uh, dissipationless, exactly like in the quantum mole effect. However, again, here we do not have quantum mole effect, and these, these are called quantum spin insulators because we have uh, quantized spin hole conductance. The picture, if you have only one interface, is given here, so you have a single mode. In fact, here I only, I mean, in this picture, you only see one mode. Actually, there could be an odd number of modes. Okay. Um, and this is illustrated in terms of, of band structure. So there is a crossing at zero momentum. Now this is the full band, the full brilliant zone. There is a crossing at zero momentum. This is the time reversal invariant point, and this crossing is protected by uh, uh, by Kramer's degeneracy. I mean. This crossing, uh, when I say that it's protected, I mean that uh, perturbation cannot open a gap. So this crossing cannot be open. It's always there. Okay. So this is the peculiarity. And these two branches of edge modes, which are on the same edge, have opposite spin. OK, um, okay. this idea um, was developed in the context. So, so uh, the, the idea was developed in these papers, the basic idea. And then uh, the, 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 the actual experimental proof was given in this paper. But this was really the start of the field of topological insulators. And since then, uh, the field has uh, grown at an explosive pace, basically because, also because, uh, it's, well, probably experimental colleagues would tell me that it's not true, but it's not too difficult to do these experiments. I mean, these are experiments that you can do in a, in a lab. Uh, 
I mean, the, the, part of the technology was already. The main problem here is a material. Is a material. Is, is, is becomes a problem of material science. So, so to 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 realize samples that are that are appropriate to to to, to, to this, investigate this type of physics. Um, so. Um, just to, to summarize a little bit this part, uh, let me go back to graphene, because actually graphene provides a very cute model uh, to uh, summarize all these different types of insulators in two dimensions. Okay? So if you, um, if you take graphene, pristine graphene, close to the, 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 the Dirac points, it's just um, the Dirac Hamiltonian, massless. So it is described by massless Dirac fermions. Now, if you break time reverse, uh, if you make in inversion symmetry by breaking sublattice symmetry, for example, you get a mass term. So the, the, the fermions become massive, so there is a gap, but the system is an ordinary insulator. No conductance, no topological properties. Um, however, if you break uh, time reversal invariance, for example, in the Aldane model, uh, we will see other way to break the time reversal invariance. But you see, the, the mass will have opposite signs at the two valleys. This realizes a churn insulator, okay? So, um, with quantum mole effect. Finally, if you have a time reversal uh, invariance, which is obtained by taking two copies of the Haldane model for spin up and spin down, and assigning different masses to spin up and spin down, this is SZ, it's just the spin component in the Z direction, then you get a Z2 topological insulator. Okay. These obviously are time model, but are conceptually important to understand the role of various symmetries. Okay, so, let me, so now, next step, well, if we understood things in two dimensions, we go to three dimensions. Well, people d uh, did that already uh, in 2007. A few, few theoretical papers appeared then, then uh, illustrating the, uh, the idea that this Z2 topological insulator can be extended to three dimensions. Um, in fact, in this case, you need actually four of these Z2 indices to characterize the, the, the system. I didn't, say, I didn't tell you how to calculate these indices, uh, but obviously you can imagine there is a proper mathematical framework, in fact, different ways to, to, to calculate them. Um, now, a strong to so some of this, um, uh, so really what people discovered is that you need this, the first index and new zero to, to be one, if you want to have a real new uh, topological uh, insulating phase, uh, which is called a strong topological insulator. If nu is equal to zero, you can think of this three-dimensional system as a stack of two-dimensional topological insulator. So not so interesting. Um, the interesting one is the strong uh, topological insulator. So now what is peculiar in this strong topological insulator? What is peculiar is that, again, by bulk and boundary correspondence, you expect to find conducting state on the surface of these materials, okay? And these conducting states, uh, they actually occur, and they are protected. They are massless, they are gapless, and they are protected, again, by Kramer's degeneracy. They typically occur at the center of the surface brilliant zone, where there is a crossing. So, in practice, this three-dimensional topological insulator hosts a Dirac cone, like the cone of graphene, on their surfaces. The big difference with respect to graphene is that in graphene, you actually have four cones in the brilliant zone, because you have the two valleys and you have the two spin components. On the, on the surface of three-dimensional topological insulator, you only have one Dirac cone. So it's like one-fourth of, of graphene. And these are certain, uh, um, certain important consequences in the, in the experimental uh, properties of, in the transport property of the system. Actually, this single Dirac mode can be described by this Hamiltonian here. Now, in graphene, the, the Dirac structure is due to the fact that you have a sublattice. Here, the Dirac structure is due to the fact that you have a spin. So again, we find this phenomenon of spin momentum locking, in which the direction of the spin and the direction of the momentum is, is interlocked. They are interlocked. So that you, when you move around uh, the, the Fermi surface, two-dimensional Fermi surface, uh, then the, you, you will see a spin texture in this, uh, in the, um, in the uh, surface states. Now, this is illustrated here. This, uh, this is taken from this nice review. Uh, it's a beautiful review, actually, but uh, the, the, the picture is from the original uh, experimental paper. So this is, our, uh, this is an experimental picture obtained by Arpes, Arp, 
ARPS, so uh, Angle Resolve Photomission Spectroscopy, which are very efficient tool to reveal the dispersion, the energy dispersion of um, bulk and surface electronic states. And what you see here is just the surface Diracon, the structure of the surface Diracon. And this illustrates the fact that uh, if you have a certain Fermi uh, level on the surface, so your Fermi surface is a circle with a certain spin texture that has a certain chirality, okay? There is no, the other chirality, in fact, is on the bottom surface. So on the topology insulator, uh, you have one cone on the top surface and in a slab, say, and one cone in the bottom surface with a certain spin, a spin texture. Now, since uh, here the, the direct structure is due to the spin, uh, if now uh, there is a magnetic coupling, and a magnetic coupling can be either a magnetic field or some ferromagnetic uh, material which you can use to dope the system at the surface, then the Zeeman coupling does not simply shift the energy. In this case, it opens a gap. So magnetic coupling would open a gap in this Dirac cone, and if you open a gap in Dirac cone, you get quantum all conductance. So if you break the time reversal symmetry at the surface by a magnetic coupling, again, you get the quantum all effect. In fact, you get the quantum anomalous if you use a magnetic coupling, which is not a magnetic field, and this is a realization in practice of the Haldane model. And, uh, and uh, you, you get a quantum anomalous solid state. This was proven experimentally uh, in a, oh, yeah, I mentioned it in the, in the previous slide, in 2013. So they used a three-dimensional topological insulator which, uh, with some magnetic uh, doping on the surface to prove uh, the quantum mole effect. Okay, uh, now, this, this area of topological band structure uh, of topological insulator is act has been really uh, studied in great depth, and one of the main results is this periodic table. Now, um, this is a complete classification of all possible topological insulators and superconductors. I didn't talk about superconductors because this would have taken us uh, too much time, but one can do similar discussion with in terms of topological invariance for superconductors. And, and you see that there are certain symmetry classes that are classified by looking at whether the system has time reversal symmetry, particle symmetry, or the so-called chiral symmetry. And then, um, uh, then you, basically you have all possible combination and you, you can check whether the system is a topological uh, invariant if it is a chair type or is a Z2 uh, invariant. And uh, the cases of the quantum mole effect is here. So this is the Chern insulator. And this is class A2 uh, is the Z2 topological invariant in two dimension, three dimension. Actually, there is a, is, there is a beautiful um, um, underlying mathematical structure which has been explored in detail. And uh, it is interesting to observe this, this classification actually appeared in a work by Atlan and Zierbauer in 1997. They were classifying all possible symmetry classes of random matrices. Now, this is, uh, so this is quite remarkable that this periodic table uh, applies also here. Obviously, here I'm talking about single particle systems, so uh, single uh, fermionic systems. So now, um, how, uh, how much time do I have still? So, 10 minutes, okay. So, so far we have looked at insulating state of matter uh, protected by a ball gap. So all the story that I told you uh, applies to systems which have a bulk gap in the, uh, which have a gap in the bulk, meaning a gap that separates conduction and, and valence band, okay? This gap closes at, at the interface, but otherwise pr it protects um, uh, all these topological invariants. But what happens if the gap closes in the bulk, okay? Do topological concepts still uh, um, apply? Notice that, the, for example, the churn invariant, the churn number is not defined uh, unless is only defined if the gap never vanishes, the gap between uh, conduction and valence band, okay? So, well, the answer to this, this question is yes, there are a number of systems that have been discovered theoretically in 2011, then the first experimental uh, demonstration was 2015, and there is a very nice review in this paper. So these are the so-called uh, bile semimetals. Uh, these are uh, semimetals in the sense that there are uh, degeneracy points in the band structure points, isolated points, where the two bands touch each other, okay? 
Now, close, so this is, uh, and, and close to these points, basically, uh, the, the band structure can be described as a two-level system, okay, which is given by this Hamiltonian. Okay. Sigma are poly matrices in the space of the two bands, so we concentrate only on the two bands that are very close to the crossing. And to have a crossing, uh, uh, basically, this coefficient here must be zero. Okay. Now, uh, the point here is that we are now in three dimensions. So in order to make this set of coefficients zero, we can play with three parameters because we have kx, ky, and kz, so the three components of the momentum. Okay. So this means that it's, not, it's in fact generic. The existence of the generacy point in three-dimensional band structure is generic because we can always imagine that adjusting the momenta to find the degeneracy point. Not only that, but even more so, uh, this degeneracy point is stable in the sense that if you uh, apply, if you include a small perturbation, so if you change a little bit the material parameters, what can happen is that you add an additional sigma matrix here, an additional poly matrix. Okay? But this poly matrix cannot open a gap, can only shift this degeneracy point. Okay? So basically, this means that this, uh, the degeneracy point are pretty stable. Okay? And they occur always in pairs. They occur always in pairs because, uh, in fact, of a general theorem, which uh, is the nielsen ninomia theorem, which was uh, uh, demonstrated in the 80s, saying that basically if you take a lattice system, so a crystal with, uh, um, uh, with uh, discrete translation invariance, if your hoppings are not too long range, uh, then um, uh, in this system you can only have an uh, uh, even number of chiral fermions, massless chiral fermions. Well, this is realized in these uh, vial systems where uh, close to this degeneracy point, the Hamiltonian takes the form of a vial Hamiltonian. So vial Hamiltonian, okay, now, now uh, so in the classification of fermions, when you look at the Dirac equation, you know that if the mass of the Dirac equation is zero, then the Dirac equation so decouples into two sectors, with different chirality. These two sectors describe two different, I mean, two vile fermions of opposite chirality. For a long time, neutrinos were believed that, has, I mean, for a long time, it was believed that they could be possible candidates for vile fermions. They are not because they, they have a mass. Uh, and in fact, the search for vile uh, fermions um, didn't give any result in the context of energy. And they can find as emergent particles in vile semimetals. In order for this to be possible, you actually need to break time reversal symmetry or inversion symmetry. This is because otherwise these degeneracy points are doubly degenerate. And then, uh, um, then a perturbation can open a gap. So this degeneracy point is, is there only if uh, one of the two is uh, broken, either time reversal or inversion symmetry. So uh, where is topology here? Well, the topology is related to the fact that this, uh, the generacy point behave as sources or um, of, um, um, they behave as monopole of the Berry uh, uh, curvature, of the Berry field, of the Berry connection, okay? So this means that to each of these uh, uh, vial nodes there is associated a topological quantity, which is the flux of the Berry curvature through a sphere or any surface enclosing it, okay? And this is another, uh, another reason uh, for their topological stability. So that's why they, uh, they should occur in pairs because, um, because the, the total sum of the chirality should, through the Brillouin zone should be zero. And this is an illustration of the idea that uh, a vile point in the Brillouin zone, they are sources or drain or of uh, Berry curvature. Um, now, this type of material have been discovered in 2015. The first was uh, found in the so-called uh, thallium arsenide family, but nowadays there, is, there are many more materials that have been proven to be uh, uh, vile semimetals, and there are many more uh, uh, candidates. This is, this is taken from the, from the paper, again, it's from the, this uh, review, but the experimental papers are here. Uh, what is interesting to observe here is the following. So this is an illustration of the brilliant zone. This dot here represents vinyl nodes. You see that there are many. It's not only two, there are, uh, there are in this case, 12. The circles here are actually some nodal lines. If you neglect spin orbit coupling in these materials, the band have not a single uh, uh, node as a degeneracy, but they have a line of degeneracy. As soon as you include spin orbit coupling, this, uh, the line of degeneracy splits, and you, you get file nodes. So 
this our picture this is uh, again our picture describe the vial nodes these are the the vial cones in the bulk and there are this structure which um, uh, here you see these sort of arcs here well this structure occur appear in the dispersion electronic dispersion of surface states okay. now they are called fermi arcs and they emerge in this uh, vial semi-metal because of the topological properties. And the single, simple argument, so let, so let me describe uh, just this is probably the last transparency that I have. Suppose that I have a vial semi-metal and then uh, it has a surface. Not, notice now, now that this is in momentum space. So um, uh, this is the brilliant zone in the bulk and this represents the surface brilliant zone. Okay. Now you have the two vial nodes in the bulk and what, what happens, what people discovered, is that there is a set, a line of electronic states which are localized on the surface, the real surface of the sample, which connect the two vial nodes. Actually, to be more precise, the projections of the vial nodes on, in the surface brilliant zone. Now, in order to, I mean, an argument that can be used, and they must exist. I mean, they, they have to be there. To, and the reason is the following. Imagine that I take a section of this brilliant zone. Okay? This section of the brilliant zone is a two-dimensional system. Now, it's a two-dimensional system where this is, this is the brilliant zone. So this is the, the dispersion of, of vial uh, fermions. There is the cone, but then there is a gap. So there is a finite gap if you are away from the, from the vial nodes. Okay? So in this section, there is, since uh, the section is taken not on the vial nodes, there is a gap in this two-dimensional system. And there is a flux of Berry curvature because there is a flux of Berry curvature starting from this node and uh, draining here. So this is like a quantum hole effect state. Okay. And since this is like a quantum hole state, there must be a chiral mode at the edge. So these Fermi arcs are the collection of all the chiral mode that must exist due to the topological properties of these vial nodes. And uh, so this is illustrated here, and, and, and this is what is seen here. Okay, so this, this Fermi arc states, I mean, there are multiple because the, the structure of the material is more complicated. So there are multiple in the, in the, in the cartoon, there, only, there was only one, but these are these surface states. Again, these are chiral. These states are chiral, which means that, at least in principle, they transport charge without dissipation, at least in one direction. Uh, in practice, however, and in contrast to the case of topological insulators, here the gap goes to zero at some point. So uh, the, these Fermi arc states um, are not completely uh, dissipationless. There might be, might be different uh, mechanisms of dissipation due to the fact that essentially this Fermi arc at their termination uh, leak in the bulk. And one of my activity, which I I don't present here, is the study of this uh, mechanism of dissipation due to phonons. Okay, I think um, the time is over. Let me just show you, this is last, but it's just for, uh, so the family of vile semi-metal is, is growing uh, at a very, uh, very quick pace. Uh, dispersion relation, of, you, you know, vile ferments in field theory are sort of constrained by Lorentz symmetry. Here, there is no, in condensed matter, there is no Lorentz symmetry. So the dispersion of this vial fermion can take different forms. Uh, there are multifold fermions where you see of, uh, sort of even flat bands, uh, uh, the, the multiple uh, uh, cones, uh, and even, uh, I mentioned it earlier, vial line semi-metals, meaning that the two bands sort of are degenerate on a line rather than an uh, uh, um, isolated point. And this is just to give you an idea of uh, wild material candidates. So it's a very, very active field and uh, where basically every week uh, a new material is discovered to be a wild uh, fermion and a lot of phenomena, of exotic phenomena are studied here. And uh, so here I get to the exit of this work. Uh, of course, I, I didn't, so what I omitted, well, everything basically. So in particular, what I omitted is what are some physical consequences of all this topology? Well, I thought that to give you, um, uh, uh, so my, my goal was to give you a little bit of a uh, few ideas about the milestone of the develop, development of the topic. Of course, when I say that I omit everything, I, I mean really everything, because what we have looked at is just topological boundary. 
is uh, single particle fermions. Uh, it's really the, the starting point for a condensed matter theorist and uh, for a theoretical physics anyway, or I mean for physics. So I didn't include interaction, I didn't include correlation. M more importantly, uh, this notion of topological order, which I sort of used, topological invariance, is only a very sort of, um, it's a sort of classical <laughs> concept, and it's back to Taules. But there is also a modern, modern concept of topological order, which involves quantum mechanics, which is entanglement. There are a number of quantum topological states of matter with long range entanglement, which is also a, a very fascinating field uh, in this system, um, li like for example, uh, starting with the fractional quantum wall effect. Fractional quantum wall effect are fractional excitation, which only exists if your system is strongly interacting. There are fractional topological insulators. There are chiral spin liquid. I mean, the, 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 the field is, is, is vast, is vast. One thing that I wanted to, to, to mention is that these ideas developed by Taules, well, started basically with, with Taules. Actually, they look at the structure of the wave functions. This is wave physics, Schrodinger equations, wave physics. So it must be, I mean, one should be able to apply this to classical physics, and it has been applied to classical physics. This idea of uh, topological boundary, uh, bulk boundary correspondence has been uh, basically as extended to classical wave system in optics, acoustics, mechanics, plasma, fluids, even at geophysical and astrophysical scales. Uh, the frontier is what I said, it's really quantum matter. Uh, so my talk I was a bit, uh, I mean, when I spoke of uh, short working topological quantum matter, I should have said short working topological matter. And uh, yes, it's a vast uh, landscape. Uh, the horizon is, um, is expanding really at a breathtaking pace also because there are experiments. I mean, you know, one, of, one of the reasons of physics is to explain experiment, to predict or explain experiment. This is a perfect field if you like this type of physics. And there is plenty of fascinating physics awaiting for discovery and exploration. And thank you for, for your attention. Thank you for this uh, very clear and interesting uh, journey. <laughs> and uh, now I ask if uh, there are some questions. Oh, wait. So um, I have... Uh a couple of points or a couple of questions. So uh, the first of all is an academic one. Um, uh, you mentioned, if I understood correctly, that it is possible to have quantum Hall effect without a magnetic field. Yes. Uh, I don't understand that. <laughs> and then uh, secondly, um, I would like to ask, um, there's a correspondence between uh, gravitational theories and uh, conformal field theories called ADS-CFT correspondence in the high energy physics community. And I would like to ask if you are aware of, do, do you think that there may be some applications or, or some way to study uh, the topological phases of matter uh, through this correspondence by, by studying uh, gravitational uh, backgrounds? Thank you. Um, so let me start from the second question. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, I, I suspect that uh, since th th that might be some approaches originating from ADS uh, CFT correspondence that might be used to study this type of materials, but I don't know. The, the, the answer to the first question is the following. So what is quantum wall effect? I mean, quantum wall effect is the fact that the uh, all conductivity is quantized in uh, mul integer multiples of e square over h. So our knowledge until uh, 2005 was that you need to have a magnetic field to get this quantization. Okay? So although already understood it in 88, you don't need to have a magnetic field. It's an intrinsic property of the material. So this is a big difference, you see, because on one side, in the quantum effect, you apply a magnetic field and you get a topological property. On the other side, in this topological insulator, you don't need to apply a magnetic field. It's an intrinsic property of the material. Thank so it's, it's, it's really a, a conceptual shift, I would say. That's why also one of the... This was understood by, by Aldeno already. 
I mean, this model, this is what it does. But it's, it's a property of the material. It's not the effect of the magnetic field that gives you the quantization of the whole conductance. But still, it retains the name of anomalous quantum Hall effect, although... It does, it does because the reason is that... Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, the reason is, when I say there is no magnetic field, I mean an externally applied magnetic field. The reason why it is called anomalous Hall effect is because when, uh, when Hall was doing his experiment, he observed that sort of this effect, the conductivity, uh, uh, was much stronger... The, not the, conduct, not the quantization, of course, at the time there was no quantization, but the, the, the effect was much stronger in the presence of ferromagnetic materials. So there is some magnetism in the material. Okay. So there is, <laughs> to have a quantum effect, you need to break the universal symmetry. So some magnetic effect should be there, but it's not an external applied. It's intrinsic in the structure of your material, like some ferromagnetism. Beautiful talk. So when you mentioned um, the, the measurement on the spin and the quantum spin hole effect, I think it was the Mollenkamp yes, experiment, Yes, yes, right? yes, exactly, yes. So if I'm not mistaken now, or I remember incorrectly, um, the, the, it's not a direct measurement of the spin currents, right? It's an indirect... No, uh, this experiment was a measurement of the two-terminal conducts. I'm sorry, I... I the question I, would be, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the two-terminal... Um, yeah, yes, sorry, yes, experiment? yes. I was very fast on that, sorry about that. Uh, let me go back. So this is, this is really the, the picture. Okay, so this is the, the, what this picture shows. I, I wrote the two-terminal conductance. This is actually a measurement of the whole resistance. So they had a four-terminal measurement, so it's like a whole bar and they do a four terminal measurement, and what they observe is the following. If the well is, uh, the, the width of the well is smaller than uh, a critical value, then the resistance is very high. It's up here, because this is just an insulator, basically. There is no, um, now if, they, if you start to increase the, the, uh, in the, in samples, whose width is larger than a critical width, these are these two samples here, one, four, and three. So you see that the, there is a plateau in the uh, four terminal resistance. Okay, so these are whole plateau. Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> I take it back. This is not whole. Uh, this, is, um, this is the two terminal conductor. So this, uh, this, there is a plateau in this four terminal conductor, but this is the, um, uh, the two terminal conductor is 2e squared over h. Now, this 2e squared over h in the two terminal conductor tells you that uh, there are edge modes. Okay, there is, there, is, there is a couple of edge modes, of protected edge modes. Yeah. So, sorry. Counting of the modes yeah. that you're seeing. Okay. Yeah. This was the smoking gun for the existence of this helical, uh, helical edge. So here there is no, 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 quant no whole conductance, <laughs> charge or conductance. Well, I, 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 I am an host, and I'm not an expert of uh, solid state <laughs> physics. Uh, uh, so if I understand, usually when you have a, um, a material that uh, is an insulator, you apply <laughs> a battery, let's say, uh, and uh, you don't see, you don't measure uh, current. current. If you have instead a topological insulator, you will see current on the surface of this material. And, and so, experimentally, you can say, okay, this is a topological... Yeah, well, there are, I mean, this is one experimental, uh, one experimental probe, yes. Yeah. And uh, it's... Of course, so, sorry, the, 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 the picture that I showed you for, for, um, for a vial simulator, for example, they are ARPES experiments. Also for the topological insulator. For, for the topological insulator, ARPES measurement, so it's not transport. Okay. So they, okay. They, with ARPES, they access directly. Yeah, to there the are system. other uh, way to, but, to, but to in, say, in the but for thing, sure, yeah. with transport, you can see. And, uh, and the, if I understand, it's uh, truly related to the uh, band structure. They are. So they, they are protected because of the topological band structure, yes. Okay. And where is topology? Still, I'm missing the, <laughs> topology, the, the, the key yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, topology is the following. It's the fact that the bulk is a topological state, meaning that the band structure has a certain value of a topological invariant, okay. and the, the external world is a trivial insulator. Okay. So you have, uh, you have to go from a situation where you have a formal yes. a topological invariant, say the churn number n equal one, to a situation in which you have 
in the vacuum so outside. Zero. Chern it's chern zero. outside okay. it's so zero. in this process, the the, um, the, uh, the chern number has to change. So the gap in the bulk okay. must go to zero. Okay. So this means that these states, that these uh, uh, states of matter, always have gapless states localized at the surface. Okay. And so instead, for a um, traditional insulator. The, topolo the topological number is zero inside, both yeah. inside and that outside. It's outside, yes. Okay, no. Yes, no. exactly. Okay, okay, thanks a lot. I also have two, two questions. One is a concern is there is, a, you, you mentioned insulator and so on, there is something analog for superconductor? Well, yes, yes, absolutely. First question. And, the, uh, and second question would be you mentioned the bulk boundary correspondence and there are some materials in which there is really a one-to-one -one correspondence. States on the boundaries of like holography in... Uh, okay, so first question about topological superconductor. Yes, so um, in the context of topological band theory, uh, there is a complete classification in terms of symmetries. This is uh, built on... Uh, on a, uh, um, so here, the crucial ingredient is this block Hamiltonian. One can uh, uh, formally construct a similar Hamiltonian, which is the Bogolub of the Jena Hamiltonian, which is in the framework of mean field theory, BCS mean field theory. Then uh, you can sort of adapt all topological argument to this Bogolub of the Jena Hamiltonian. And this is basically the way. Uh, then w what happens is that if you have this Bogolub of the Jena, this Bogolub of the Jena, the idea is that uh, you're starting your material. Now, if you have some superconducting pairing, what, f what you want to do, you want to double your uh, system and put this pairing. So you, you get an Hamiltonian which, um, which has two copies, which are one the time reverse of the other, and then you have the pairing. And you can repeat this sort of, you can adapt the topological argument to this, uh, to this type of Hamiltonian, so definitely. So the, the, the table, the periodic table that I showed you before, no, it was at the end here. Is it includes topological. So here I didn't, I didn't tell it because I didn't talk about superconductors. So this is the churn insulator. This is, these are the Z2 topological insulators. If uh, the symmetry of Bogolubo de Jern is basically particle or symmetry. So when you see a one here, so these are superconducting systems. And uh, this, uh, this has, uh, behind that there is a deep mathematical structure which I don't know anything about. Both periodicity, if if both the name of both tells you something, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, it's and it extends. Uh, uh, there is a, a interesting mathematical picture uh, property here is that this uh, table, if you notice, has a certain periodicity of eight. The reason so the, here on this line are the dimension of the system from one to eight actually, but then it repeats itself. So the same uh, entries are found if you go on in higher dimensions the same pattern of, of uh, uh, I mean, the, 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 there is really, um, yeah, I'm totally uh, unable to, to explain anything about it. Uh, the second question was? Holography. Oh, holog uh, ah, the, the, the there are some materials in which there is really a one-to-one -one correspondence between boundary and bulk? Okay, uh, I would say that the, the, the way uh, uh, bulk boundary uh, correspondence is understood here is that if you have an interface between uh, two uh, uh, topologically different quantum num invariants, then you, are, you must have, as, as electronic states, a certain number of states, and this number is dictated by the difference between the numbers of, uh, or between the topological invariants across the interface. But not that any state has a, has a boundary correspondence, in a sense. Okay. Other questions? Okay, I don't see any other questions. So thank you very much for the presentation. Sure.